Hello friends, it's Kira. For those of you who don't know me, I am one of the admins of the Polymer Clay Tribe group and a co-owner of createalong.com. And today I just wanted to take a few minutes to play with jelly plates because they are so fun. And next week's YouTube video on Polymer Clay TV is going to feature them. So I just wanted to get you ready for that and show you what they are all about. So. Jelly plates are from Jelly Arts and they come in lots of different sizes. So I'm going to show you, when I turn this down to my work table, I'll show you. I have a couple of sets of the small ones. This, this is a rectangle and you can see here that's a hexagon. There's a circular one. There's a triangle. So you can use these kind of like rubber stamps. And then the one I'm going to play with the most here is a five by seven. So what these are are mono printing plates and you can make patterns on your polymer clay by using paint and texture tools and then putting that impression onto your clay. So I know that live video can be difficult because of streaming, hello Roxanne, and um, you know, because I can get distracted. So I wanna encourage you to come back to Polymer Clay TV on YouTube next week and watch my edited video and be sure to subscribe to our channel. So without further ado, I'm gonna flip this around to my work table and show you what I've got going on here. So this is my five by seven jelly plate and I have some clay that I've conditioned and rolled out. And then this is a piece of clay that I um, printed the other day. So you can see here that there's a faint print and I will say this, when you mono print on polymer clay, it's not gonna ever come out perfect. You're gonna have little spaces that don't come out right. It's not that it's not right either, right? It's that it's not perfect coverage. So generally what I do is one of the things I'm gonna do today is silk screen right over the top of this. And also like cut it up and use different parts for different things. So you can see that there's a really cool looking pattern and it's not perfect, it's kind of like fabric. And this comes from using a stamp, which this is our um, Floral Fantasia silicone stamp and it's stuck to an acrylic block to make it easy to use. And the pattern on here comes from that stamp. And then the cool thing is, while you are jelly printing, you also end up with papers. So if you're a mixed media artist, this is the paper that came from playing around with this stamp. So I've got two sides going on. This one is very similar to the clay in appearance, but it's on paper. Right, and then you can cut these up and use these in your artwork as well because they're kind of like ghost images. So that's important. I need to grab a piece of paper because I don't have that for this. All right, so these are all the tools and things. So I'm gonna use some uh, deck. Uh, this is folk art brushed metal. This paint works on polymer clay. If you're not familiar with paints that work with your polymer, Elisa did a YouTube video last week all about paint and polymer clay. So this is the folk art color shift. So folk art paints work, um, deco art paints work. These are crafting paints, but you can also use the heavier body acrylics from different companies. You just have to test and make sure that the paint works with the clay that you're using. And I am using Primo. I always use Primo or Sculpey Souffle. They're interchangeable in my artwork. They go together. This I think is a blend of um, like Wasabi Primo and Robin's Egg Blue um, Souffle and there's some pearl and some glitter in there. I mean, it's just scraps. This is how I like to use my scraps. Let me grab a piece of paper. Just regular printer paper is fine. And this is a brayer. If you're not familiar with this tool, this is a roller for printmaking. So with this tool, um, which you wanna keep clean, and I have a cat in my studio, which I know many of you have, so it's a constant uh, 
a constant thing to keep her hair out of stuff. But um, this is a brayer, and this is what you use to put the, the paint onto the jelly plate. So I'm going to move this piece of clay over, and I'm going to open this plate. So jelly plates come in like a clamshell packaging, and you want to keep that packaging. That keeps your plate nice. And you just open this up, and I recommend keeping this little flyer. It's got information on it. This one actually is like a whole a whole thing here. So it has your information, so just keep that around. Don't throw it away. And then <clears throat> inside of here, you have the plate, but it's sandwiched between two pieces of acetate plastic. You wanna keep those as well. This keeps your plate stiff and clean and ready to use. So I'm just gonna peel off those pieces and I'm going to keep them for later. All right, so your plate itself is like gelatin and this is actually where this comes from is gelatin printing because people were using actual gelatin, which breaks down, okay? And then you can't use it anymore because it's like a, a food pro, <clears throat> excuse me, a food product that will um, degrade and then you can't use it anymore. So this company, Jelly Arts, invented this reusable sort of, I don't know how permanent it is. I don't know if I would say it's a permanent jelly plate, but um, I know it's very long lasting. I have a couple of them that I've had for a very long time. So I'm just sticking it here onto my tile. That'll keep it from moving. And I'm going to put a little bit of paint. You really don't need a lot, you'll see. When I, when I get this going, you'll see, okay? You just need a little bit of paint because what you're gonna do is spread that out real thin all over the surface of this plate. And you want to keep moving your brayer back and forth, change directions, because if you don't, you could end up with lines, kind of, and blobs, like the paint will get stuck in the same spot every time and just blob over itself. So once you get this going into a thin, very thin layer, then you, I'm very lightly going over it a few more times just to even out any marks that might be on the surface. And you'll see there's a sheen of paint on my briar and I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> and wipe that off right now because the longer you let it sit the harder it is to wash it off right so if you kind of get rid of most of it now it'll be easier when you take it to the sink later now my stamp can be used right now in a couple of ways I'm gonna put my paper here so you can see. So I'm gonna stamp gently because your jelly plate actually responds to even just the slightest touch. So now I have some paint on here. I'm going to go ahead and stamp it right onto this piece of clay. That's why I have several things prepared over here. So very faintly, I'll, I'll make sure that you can see that better in a minute. All right, so I'm just gonna stamp off any excess and come back and do this again. And then one more time, because I'm not sure exactly how big my piece of clay is. So you can use that as a stamp. You see how we've got marks on the paper now. And then I'm gonna take this big piece of clay and actually lay it right on here. To pick up that design. And then when I peel it back, you can see what I was talking about with the not perfectness that happens. And I actually really love that. 
And then we're gonna take our paper, rub it firmly over the surface of the jelly plate. You can even brayer over it. And that's gonna remove a bunch of that paint that's left. It's called a ghost image. And as the paint dries on the plate, Okay, you won't be able to get it all up. So now let me show you what's going on. So from that first stamping that I did, now I have this painted image stamped onto this piece of clay for my use in a project. I have this, which I went over the other piece. So now I have several sort of image layers going on. If you like to layer in your artwork, you will love this technique. And then I wanted to show you one more thing. So I'm just gonna leave this paint on here because it doesn't matter to me, it's fine that way. And I'm gonna take a silk screen. This is the Berry Bushes silk screen from Create Along. And right now, if you go to our Facebook page, you will see a message about our silkscreen sale that we're currently having. So you'll wanna go check out Create Along with Polymer Clay TV. Our Facebook page has a coupon code on it for you if you wanna grab a silkscreen. So I have my silkscreen here, and yesterday I was playing with my, ah, here it is. This is our squeegee for the silk screen. It's a great rubber tool, and I'm gonna actually silk screen onto the jelly plate. So for that, you just run paint along the edge of your screen, and we're gonna drag it down. And I'm actually silk screening onto the jelly plate itself. So rather than screening onto the clay, I'm putting that paint on the plate. All right, I will be right back. The reason I ran away is because, you know, you always have to um, wash your silk screen. You don't want to get that paint stuck on there. So now I have this sheet and I want to just layer it up. So here we go. And I, you can see on the back I had some other stuff going on. I'm just going to plop this on here gently. And I'm gonna get that silk screen design over everything else that I just did. So if you love layering, you will absolutely love the depth that you can create using jelly plates. So now I have this left over here and I'm gonna go ahead and do some more on here. Peel back this with the ghost image of the silk screen on it. And finally, the paper to get the rest of that paint off. Okay, so this can now just go to the sink and be completely washed off with soap and water. No big deal. So let me show you all the stuff. What ends up happening when you jelly print is you end up with a lot 
of stuff that you can then cut up and use for different things. So this is our patterned and layered piece that has the silk screen over it. This is another piece like that, but it has a stronger design. See what happens is the first print that you pull has a lot of paint on it. The next one has less, and then the final one has even less because the paint comes off of here sort of in layers, okay? And you end up with a whole bunch of stuff to work with in the end. So I like to prepare a lot of, um, I, I like to prepare a lot of clay and a lot of paper and a lot of um, just let things flow when I'm jelly printing because I know I'm going to end up with lots of stuff to use up. So I'm going to use some of these to make a little project or something and I'll post it later in the group. Does anyone have questions? I know I see who's watching. Hi Misty, yes, curious about jelly plates. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, when we were at the Creativation show earlier this year, we spoke to the Jelly Plate girls and they they actually did provide us with the 5x7 plate um, so that I could do like a bigger project because I already had the little ones. And the little ones work kind of like a rubber stamp. So I think maybe next week I'll pop on and show you how you could use them to make your own designs that you can stamp onto the clay. So with the larger plate, I tend to stick that to my work surface. Although in the YouTube video, you will see me picking it up and using it like a stamp. So there's multiple ways of using these tools and they're just really fun. So I'm gonna sign off because like I said, I didn't want this to go on for a long, long time. Will they be added to the shop? We don't sell jelly plates, um, but I will, I'll drop a link to where you can get them. Jelly Arts is the website. They have an amazing blog. They have a huge YouTube channel full of projects, just like we do. And actually further back in our YouTube, I did a jelly printing um, on Polymer Clay TV where I did a whole bunch of colors and cut them up into strips and then reassembled it and silk screened over the whole top of it and made a pair of earrings. So those I know are on our channel as well. Yep, you're welcome, Roxanne. So uh, have fun. And be sure to post in the group. If you make something with a jelly plate, post it, because we're going to share all this stuff with the Jelly Arts girls and do a little kind of cross-promotion. So it helps us to help them to show people what people are doing with polymer clay. So I hope you have a great rest of your day, and um, I will see you soon.